five state assemblyman James Gallagher again announced that bill that would apply First Amendment free speech rights to social media platforms. Thanks for joining us, Assemblyman, again. Good to be with you. All right, so let's clarify here. I looked over this bill that's uh, in the works right now. Now, they're pri these are private companies, these social media companies. Do you feel like the government really needs to take a bigger role in oh, having oversight on what they do? Yeah, well, cancel culture right now is the biggest threat to free speech in the United States right now. And these social media platforms have really become the new town square, the public square, where anybody and everybody is invited to come on and share their and express their ideas. Uh, we know that these forums, you know, provide a lot of influence, uh, play a big role in elections. And so it's, it's time that we apply First Amendment protections to social media platforms to help protect people's free speech. So you know, one thing I have a hard time with with the town square concept because, you know, say in a town square, you know the person who's telling you one thing, you know the other guy who's saying another thing, you have an intelligent conversation. Whereas on social media, we're seeing just this huge influx of information just being repeated and shared and nobody even seems to know where that source is coming from. And, and at this point, do you believe that there's any dangers tied to social media in general, especially when it comes to the spread of false information? Well, we used to understand in this uh, in this country that the best way to uh, deal with misinformation is to have free speech, you know, where people can call out things that are wrong and they can share information and say, well, hey, did, have you seen this evidence? You know, have you seen this background? Uh, to me, the answer is more speech, is the ability for people to interact, to share ideas, to have a debate, to have a discussion. Um, and the problem that we're seeing right now on social media is, uh, is a select group of people are the ones who determine what's, what's fake news, what's misinformation, and it really seems like it has a political bias. Do you think we could ever see the FCC take over and monitor social media? Could we ever see, maybe it's sort of the opposite really of what you're talking about, but see regulation uh, of these social media platforms the way you see regulation of the kind of media that we're on right now? Well, the regulation is provided by the Supreme Court. I mean, there is a, there's centuries of case law that talk about free speech and what's not protected speech. For instance, uh, obscenity, incitements to violence, all those things are not protected speech and can be something that is, uh, you know, blocked or uh, not held up on these forums. However, what you can't do is say, hey, I don't like what people are saying. I don't like the beliefs or the viewpoint. Um, of those things and then censor them. And that's the problem. The First, the first Amendment provides the greatest protection for all of these things and it should be applied now to these social media platforms. We shouldn't allow, for instance, these big tech companies to completely eliminate an entire app, Parler. Uh, we saw that, you know, an entire group of speech was just completely taken out of the public context. Um, that should not be allowed in the United States of America where we have foundational principles of free speech. What do you think of the concept of being that the state of emergency, this continued state of emergency during the pandemic? It's kind of changed the rules for really all of our government and the decisions that are made by our leaders. Um, and I think that that's the argument being made oftentimes is, well, during this pandemic, we can't have somebody spreading false information that goes against what the CDC might say because it could jeopardize lives in a public health crisis. What do you think about that? Well, to me, that's the, that kind of thinking is exactly what is wrong. Uh, an emergency doesn't take away the rules of the Constitution, um, which is a contract between the people who are governed, uh, you know, between, between those who are governed and the government. Um, and we don't wanna sit, we don't wanna create a situation where just because it's an emergency, we're taking away people's fundamental constitutional rights um, to, to speak what they believe, uh, to share information, uh, and, and certainly that information is gonna be disputed. I mean, that's part of this country too, is that people have the opportunity in the forum where these ideas can be shared and expressed and those that are weaker ideas get called out. Uh, and, and to me, you know, the cream rises to the top. The best ideas win out um, when, you have, uh, when you have true free speech. Okay, thanks so much for joining us, Assemblyman. We're out of time at this point. Of course, this all applies to platforms, 
not platforms operated by local, state, or federal governments. This is privately owned social media platforms.